Hi everyone. We're going to take a look at the uh, 2nd November chart, which is the full moon in Gemini at zero degrees. We're going to have a couple of these uh, zero degrees. We're going to have a, the, the full moon in December. I looked ahead a little and it's on the solstice. It's like the day after the solstice at zero cancer when we get into December. So these zeros, it's, it's sort of a dichotomy, really, because it's the full moon, which is the completion, but then the zero, which is the new beginning, it's kind of all wrapped up in one. This one, uh, the sun is conjunct uh, Jupiter, so that's pretty sweet. That should be really lucky, um, good fortune, good luck. Um, maybe you'll get some awareness, because it's a full moon, you might get some awareness as to... Um, what Jupiter in Sagittarius is going to be like for you. You know, this could be a good day to see. Oh, and by the way, it's happening on November 23rd, 5.38 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, but that will vary. Yeah, so it's, um, you know, you can get some awareness as to what Jupiter in Sagittarius is going to be all about. That's my first uh, inclination uh, about it. We have a lot of stuff still at those points there. It is going to be, um, so it's, what is that making, what kind of aspect is it? Uh, trining and sextiling the nodes, which have changed signs. They're into 29 Cancer and 29 Capricorn. I saw absolutely nothing that I know of happened here. <laughs> but sometimes, like I tell other people, it might be something that you're not aware of. There could be stuff going on behind the scenes. That's my nodal return was 29 Cancer Capricorn. I'm just like, oh boy, it's that. And there was something else that happened. There was a whole bunch of stuff that happened on that new moon in Scorpio that was like just right on my chart. And as um, far as I can tell, nothing happened. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm not really even sure what, what the hell is going on, but um, sometimes it's stuff behind the scenes that you don't really know about. You know, things are going on that are going to affect you, but they're just not right in your face. You've just not been notified of it, or you're not aware of it, but I was all stoked for that. I was just like, oh, wow, this is going to be a banner day, a banner week. It was, I don't know, there was like five or six things. Um, the new moon itself was like on my Neptune, and... Uh, you know, I have a whole bunch of stuff in Scorpio, and, you know, it's just, oh, and this is hitting, and this is hitting, and then Jupiter going zero Sag, that's my second house cusp is zero Sag, and many times when stuff has hit zero Sag, I've, big money has shown up out of the blue for me, nothing, <laughs> crickets, you know, well, not totally crickets, but I mean, nothing like I was expecting, it was just business as usual, you know, nothing really major changed or happened, but, you know, you, you never know. You never know what it actually did happen. Oh, Saturn was on my son, I think, at that point, too. I mean, I just had everything was going on. But whatever. You know, enough about me. Um, but there are some... The energy is shifting. So if if if, if, I've, if I'm the, the guinea pig or I'm the, uh, the litmus test for all this, maybe there's... You know, if you didn't see any big shifts, maybe it's just not really showing up yet. Maybe it's sort of behind-the-scenes sort of things for everybody or for a lot of people. Um, well, not only that, okay, so it's actually trining the south node. It's zero, but if you don't understand, even though it's in Sagittarius, it's still conjunct the 2829 of Scorpio. So it's a trine here and a trine to Chiron. So the sun is involved in a grand trine involving the north node, Chiron, and the sun. So that's pretty major. Chiron has moved back into Pisces. Uh, Uranus has moved back into um, Aries, squaring up with the nose. We've got a big T-square with the uh, Aries Capricorn energy. We're going to have to talk about that, because that's like that Pluto-Uranus square we were dealing with for all those years. It's that Capricorn Aries energy, but this time it's the nose. But let's not jump ahead. Let's start with this Grand Trine and, uh, that's happening here with Chiron, the Sun, and the North Node. Well, Chiron, I just feel like dipping back into that uh, Pisces is stuff that we've got to go look over again. we just got to look it over again. we got to give it another once over. We thought maybe we healed, healed it and dealt, dealt with it. I was going to say dealed with it. <laughs> dealt with it, uh, but we haven't. You know, There's still some remnants of what's going on. And these nodes shifting into these vibration of the earth and water energy with this, I think is going to really help us to see. It's going to be more conducive to see, um, 
Cancer is, is like Chiron, wants to heal. The Cancerian energy is the healer. It wants to have a healing. Um, which may have not really been the case with Leo as much, you know. The Cancer wants to go deep. The Cancer energy wants to go deep. It wants to heal like the Chiron and Pisces. So we're going to have another look at it. And just in time for the holiday season. <laughs> Because with you know the Cancerian energy, of course, is the home and family. You know, so just in time for the holiday season, when we're coming together and seeing all our family members, uh, here comes this big aspect here. But the thing is, instead of I, I think what this conduced, what this is nice, this uh, trying, which is harmonious and everything, I, I feel like it could be you know uh, a healing, not something that maybe maybe something that really pissed you off because it's what the day after thanksgiving i mean these aspects are going to be in place in the u.s uh, we do have thanksgiving they're going to be in place thursday this is friday morning the next morning you know so it's 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 happening it's it's active then you know during thanksgiving you know it, it i think instead of pissing you off like it may have you know uh, in the past it may have pissed you off uh, or irked you like something like something that's always a jab. I'm seeing like somebody like jabbing you, or, like always bothered you or irked you. It may just be more of a you know you're willing to like uh, apply some understanding to it, you know. And um, it may be um, I'm feeling like for some a lot of people the roles are changing, the roles are shifting, especially with uh, the cooking and all that, like the matriarchs of the family. Maybe some of the women that were, you know, the matriarchs and always did all the cooking, maybe they're getting a little older now. And then the younger generation is stepping in. And then even a younger generation will step in, you know, that were maybe the ones that were just kids running around playing. Now they're old enough to join in in the, the preparation and the, the, you know, the food and the whole thing here. It's we gotta remember what's squaring with this Uranus. So th some unexpected things are bound to happen. Actually, it's there's a grand cross with Venus too. Look at that. We've got Venus opposed Uranus, and then it's a big T square with the nodes. I mean a big uh, grand cross, I should say. Um, yeah. So Venus, who do we love? Who do you love? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Who do you love? So who do you love? And Venus and Libra in the seventh house of uh, partnership. So it could be in our relationships too, like our our, our partnership relationships, our love, our love relationships, uh, even more than the family stuff. But the family stuff's going to come in for sure. Um, Uranus, I think with the Uranus in there, I just feel like many of us are going to be surprised. Maybe we're expecting now. Here we go, another Thanksgiving. Here we go again, the same old stuff, you know. And Uranus, it could be like, oh wow, isn't this a nice surprise? Oh wow, um, isn't this different? Isn't this d d different in a good way, you know? I think it's going to be different in a lot of ways, and with approached with love, because the North Node in Cancer is loving, the Venus in Libra is loving. So it's not, it could be different, you know, when you say different, that could just go about anyway, especially with Uranus, right? Uh, but I feel like in this case, it's going to be kind of like, oh, isn't that sweet? Look at how they, wow, isn't that great that they, you know, pitched in and helped out? Or what a nice surprise. Or let's get the screen back on here. <laughs> Talk about surprises and Uranus electronic stuff. Um, somebody's going to get like a, a message that is showing me like... Uh, like somebody who's in the service or overseas or something like that, they're going to Skype in or something, or maybe one of those where they all, oh, we're, we're going to Skype them and really they're in the other room, kind of surprise. I feel like that's, I'm seeing somebody in the uniform uh, and they're talking on the screen, you know, like a Skype call or something, or FaceTime or something. So that's going on for somebody. And it's really a surprise that, oh, they're, they're really here, look. We're kidding. We're not in Afghanistan or wherever. We're here in the next room. Because um, the, the scrubs, I see them wearing like the, you know, not the scrubs. What do you call that? The fatigues or whatever, that uni the army uniform. And it's the brown tones. So that would be like somewhere, you know, in the desert. Uh, it's not the green uh, camouflage things. It's the brownish, browns and tan colored ones. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Well, they're saying they're going to cross, cross that off my list. So something's getting crossed off your list, somebody out there, too, or many people. 
Uh, we also, in the low degrees, while I'm doing this, I happen to see that we do have Ceres in the low degrees. The, also a nurturer, also a goddess energy. So there's a lot of this goddess energy coming forward. And, you know, the mother, whether it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be the female, but the mother energy, the womb, the goddess, the feeding, the nurturing, the coming together. Um, some big surprises. I feel like a lot of surprises, that like people are planning surprises that and are going to be surprised and shocked, but in a wonderful and fun and good way. Because Jupiter's involved too, you know, with the zeros here. So fun, good surprises are uh, at hand. Uh, what else? Anything else? We've got Mars square the sun and the moon. So Mars is in a square with this. Uh, there's a T-square involving Mars. Well, that could get a little bit... Mm. <laughs> that could be a little hairy, you know, the sun, the moon, and the Mars. You know, that could be aggressions. But again, it's in the sign of Pisces, so I don't feel like it's going to be all that. Mars and Pisces is not powerful, is it? It's not in its power at all. It might even be in, that might even be the detriment. I don't know that for a fact. I never memorized all those. It's every every placement it's in, it's you know, it's there's its detriment, and there's these different spots. It's exalted, and there's these different things, but I could never remember them. I always, I could never keep those in my head for some reason, but whether it's a detriment or not, it's not a good spot for uh, Mars to be in, you know, in Pisces. So it's not expressing itself fully at all. It's more of an internalized thing like that. See, I feel, here's what I feel. Some people are just like, oh my God, they're going to go in with an attitude, like they, in the 12th, in Pisces, 12th house energy, past. Well, I know, I know what's gonna here it comes. I, you know, this is gonna be just like every other year, and start getting yourself all pissed off and worked up over some shit that happened, you know, whatever, ten years ago or something. And then, if you allow this other energy to come in, you could be surprised that um, it's it's much different now. And um, it should be different. We're always changing and growing. I say this all the time, you know. It's, it's, I think that's a lot of problems in our world is people want to keep things stagnant, no matter what it is, you know. Keeping things stagnant, you're always going to fight a losing battle, no matter what you're trying to keep stagnant. And this is not, this is beyond politics. This is a lot of different things. Because we live in an expanding universe. That's a scientific fact, okay. I think that's still a scientific fact, right? <laughs> That we live in a, a, an expanding universe, so therefore we must expand. We can't, if, if you can't fight, uh, now I'm hearing that Todd Rundgren's song, Can't Stop Love in Action. You can't stop, you can't stop. Can't stop love in action. But um, it's not that, uh, well, maybe there's some, we can look that up, but it, it's, it's, you can't, it's, it's, a, it's a force greater than all of us, you know. It doesn't matter how many people you get together and say, well, we don't like cousin so-and-so because they're an asshole or they're this or they're that. And they remember 10 years ago when she said that, blah, 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 yeah, nah, nah, you know. <laughs> Forget it. Forget about it. <laughs> I think, you know, Aunt uh, Agnes or whoever. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me catch that and turn it off for you. Sorry. Turn that off, please. There you go. Um, whoever, uh, you you know, whoever that we have this grudge against or we're sure they're an asshole and we're sure they're going to, you know, uh, you, don't, you don't have to judge people on their past behaviors. I bet they're going to show up with, you know, be the nicest and, and just be so wonderful and you're just going to be like, wow, what the hell happened here? It's because, you know, they could, many people are going to get knocked off their, knocked off their center, but in, a, again, a good way. So if you're expecting the worst, you know, you may be in for a big surprise. And that could, with Jupiter, it could be just anything. It doesn't have to be, I'm focusing on a holiday dinner just as a metaphor of life, you know, because it happens to fall right that day or the next day. But, um, you know, many things, many, many things uh, can, can fall into the, the general vibration. Uh, what else is going on in the aspectarian here? Let's see here. Pluto's on aspect, I bet, I bet you it's hitting an asteroid or two. Huh? Well, I would say it's sextiling Neptune, but that's that ongoing deal forever. Uh, we got, let's, let's run down the line here. Mars is doing all that squaring, Jupiter is opposing the moon, we know that. Jupiter's squaring Mars also, yeah. Yeah, so, um, 
you know, it almost this sort of, this Mars Jupiter thing, with, especially in Sag, because it's so fun and lighthearted, it's such a fun and lighthearted energy, and it's also talking about that exalted and all that stuff. That's Jupiter's home sign, and there's like a word for it. You know, Jupiter is ruled by Sagittarius, so it's powerful in its own place, like Neptune is and Saturn is in its own signs. You know, uh, but Sag is so lighthearted, and um, this reminds me of like when like you're trying to be pissed at somebody, and you're just sitting like a kid. You're like, I know I can make you laugh, and they're no, they got their arms crossed, like no, you can't make me laugh. And then you start tickling them, and they're they're fighting against no, you're not gonna make me laugh. And then eventually, you know, you fall off, and you all know, fall down laughing, and it's fun. Let me get a drink of water. That's what this reminds me of, you know, that this is going to win out. The tickle monster or whatever is going to win out in the end, okay? <laughs> you can't be pissed forever. Uh, not with all this uh, groovy energy they're saying. There's too much groovy energy. Uh, what else? Let me take a look at this aspect here. And Uranus opposed Venus. We talked about that. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, sextile Mars. Saturn, sextiling Mars. Yeah, so that's a harmonious aspect of, as well. Um, you know, I think that kind of just falls into what I'm saying. You know, the Mars energy, it, it feels like it's this old thing. Somebody's coming in with a bad attitude right off the bat or preconceived notions about days gone by. And, uh, you know, the other thing with the Pisces energy is a lot of times you don't got it, you don't have it right. You know, again, they always say there's three versions, there's your version, my version, and what really happened, but uh, with Pisces in this, uh, Mars in this Pisces, you can have things that, you can be pissed about things that weren't even really, didn't even really happen like that. You could be, be um, the, the Neptunian illusion of, that's not really how it happened. You know, you have like a false uh, memory of it, or you've blown it out of, in your festering and in your anger, you know, you've blown it out of proportion. And it, it really wasn't as dark or deep as you really thought it was. And um, not only that, but it doesn't have to be. You know, you don't have to carry that around anymore. You don't have to carry that load, baby. Oh, look at this. Um, I run the zero, zero chart, the flat wheel, just so it's easier to understand the house placements and all that. But according to this, at least the New York chart, um, Jupiter's conjunct the Ascendant, too. So that's even more so going to give us, uh, if if you ran it for 5.39 a.m. New York, New York, Jupiter would be right on the Ascendant, So and the Sun would be, too. Um, so that even gives us a more brighter outlook, a brighter, uh, sunny disposition, lighthearted, brighter, you know, uh, that even enhances the vibe of that um, thing, that's Jupiter vibration, Jupiter and Sag vibration. Nodes are trying in the ascendant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's a bit about it for the uh, aspectarian. You know, a grand cross is a big thing. They always say like squares make things happen. You know, trines are fine, but you know when, when there's a trine, a lot of times you just have a nice day. Yeah, you had a nice day. It's all good, and you know you don't um, you don't really notice it. Um, you need the big squares of oppositions, conjunctions. That's what when these events happen. That's why I'm so shocked at so far. <laughs> it's been pretty much business as usual for me because I had some major stuff uh, go on. Uh, but it hasn't even been 30 days, so maybe maybe it's still maybe it's still going. Maybe it's still happening. Oh uh, yeah, but the, the energy is changing all around. The nodes have changed sign into earth and water. Chiron's back in the water sign. Jupiter's moved into fire. Air, uh, Uranus has moved into back into fire. So these elements are, are part of it too. You know, the earth and water, there's such a gathering of, of uh, energy in this Capricorn. So this is going to be a major, it's been, you know, the Pluto Saturn, it's been a major um, area of focus. And Lilith went through there. Lilith was in there for a long time. We've got Vesta just about finishing up, also conjunct this uh, south node over here. Um, you know, when the, when the south node comes through is where we got to address our past. Our past in this life and our past lives' lives, you know, our past incarnations. And um, in the sign of Capricorn, a lot of times it's about the power, the greed, the status, um, the money, the, uh, you know, uh, prestige, the, uh, you know, it, it's like the... the, the um, 
this is the father and this is the mother in the in the old style sense of the word which doesn't apply so much anymore but the breadwinner working outside the home the boss the wife who stays home and takes care of the kids and is that so those roles are disappearing and the you know because somebody who stays home they would have a lot of times they have just as equal you know things are equaling out and these oppositions are not as um, maybe not as prevalent as they once were you know so uh, it's changing it's changing it's changing and Pluto going through there it is going to change it no one's going to catch up with Pluto and stuff like that. So this power stuff, this past, and that's been coming out anyway, you know, with all this Me Too, you know, we talked about this a lot in these readings. But that's really going to come up when this South Node gets over here. Look out. I'm getting my dog snoring over here. <laughs> Wait. Oh, he's not going to do it because I said something. There we go. Oh, I talked right when he's snoring. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's snoozing. He had a hard night. Okay, and then the raindrops are falling out there, too. Raindrops keep falling on my head. You sleeping, buddy? Is you sleeping? Okay, back to the reading. So, uh, you know, we need a little bit of this Sag energy, a lot of this Sag energy, to kind of break up uh, the serious uh, Capricorn, you know, the serious Capricorn energy and bring in some of this uh, light-hearted Sag. We've got the Sun there, we've got Jupiter there, we've got Mercury there. So this is awesome, man. This is like light-hearted, fun conversation, um, you know, uh, not taking things too seriously. Let's have some fun. Let's play some games. You know, let's, um, you know, talk about other things besides politics that could be too many people might be dreading going to their family thing because then the political stuff you know it all comes up you know that could be too and you know maybe it's just best not to talk about I mean there's people in my family that I don't agree with and we just don't talk about it in both politics and religion you know they think I'm a whatever you know <laughs> they they don't approve of uh, from a spiritual aspect because they're strict religious stuff they don't approve of me at all you know <laughs> they think i'm gonna go to hell and the whole bit you know and um i only take so much of that and then we've now we've gotten to a place it's just like we just don't even go there we don't even talk about it you know i'm not gonna sit here and give you get into an argument there's lots of people lots of uh the quote unquote new age people too that would uh you know just have these bible quotes ready to get them right back at them you know well what about this and this said the bible you know I'm not interested in, um, that's like a sparring match, you know. I'm not interested in having a sparring match with you uh, with Bible quotes, uh, you know. I'm <laughs> just not. You can believe whatever you want to believe, and I can too. You know, I'm not hurting you, you're not hurting me. It's all good, you know. But I don't want to go off on that tangent. But I mean, there's ways that you can still love people and be around them and have a good time with them. You know, some of these uh, religious people that I'm talking about in my family, you know, we still love each other. And, um, you know, I still enjoy their company. And we have many things to talk about, and we can really have a good time together. We just don't talk about that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're going to pray for my soul so I don't go to hell. And, hey, how pray for me. That's awesome. I mean, who couldn't use more prayer? Prayer is a powerful thing. Whether you're religious or not, prayer is a very powerful thing, you know. There's, there's, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know. I'm pretty anti-religion because I had a lot of negative experiences with religion myself, but there's some beautiful things in religion. Like I always talk about the Midnight Mass in the Catholic Church. That's a beautiful thing I love still, you know. And, um, it, there, there is a, you know, I, most of the time, if I would go to a Catholic church, I feel really, even as a child, I felt really restricted, and like I was a sinner, you know, there's so much guilt and all that involved, but the, that midnight mass, it, I don't feel that at all, I feel it's, it's such a peaceful, beautiful uh, thing, so there's always, you know, and even with politics or whatever you guys don't agree about, you know, there's always something. There's always something that's good about it, or something that, um, it's not like, well, you're just wrong, everything's wrong, you suck, you're wrong, you know, that's just crazy. 
by the same token, you, you know, you should call yourselves out. Uh, I had, uh, you know, uh, on social media, I, I, there was some fake stuff going around uh, from the Democrats, which I consider myself to be pretty much, and um, I called them out on it. You know, it's just like, well, you know, if you want to get rid of fake news, you got to be impeccable, you know. You got to be impeccable with your word or impeccable with uh, what we, you know, we can't do it either. These exaggerations, you know, those aren't good on either end. You can't point the finger and say, blah, 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 you know, all the, look at this is fake, I fact checked it, it's fake, fake, fake. When there's fake stuff over here too. And boy, did I catch hell for that. They all jumped all over me. It's like, well, it's fake too. You know, let's not anybody put out any fake stuff. Let's, you know, that's the whole problem all over the place, you know. These big exaggerations and these big stretching of the truth to try to prove your point. At the very, and that's, you know, that's Jupiter and Sag, too. The, they want to get to the real truth of things. Let's get to the real truth. Then there's no, there's nothing to argue about. If we get to the, find the truth, the real truth, and nothing but the truth, I mean... <laughs> then there's nothing to argue about because it is what it is. And that's a, that's a thing I hope that will happen with Jupiter and Sag. That is definitely a, a Sagittarius thing and a ninth house thing. It's higher education, bigger, pers you know, expanding your perspective, uh, truth, the real truth, you know, because there is a real truth buried under all this crazy hoopla somewhere. You know, there is a, a real truth, you know. But I don't want to get off on that. Please don't start a political argument either in the comments. Uh, but anyway, so this is it. I think we're in for some surprises. I think we're in for some pretty big surprises, and in a good way. Don't go in with any preconceived notions, whether it's the Thanksgiving dinner or it's whatever. Whatever's going on around that time, even if you're not going to have Thanksgiving. Whatever, you're a job interview or a, you know, it's time to be really open with the Sun and Jupiter and Sag and Mercury. It'll expand your mind, you know. Open your mind. Free your mind and your ass will follow, like they say. Free your mind and your ass will follow. If I was going to do a headline, that would be the, the headline of this. Because Mercury is also, this new moon is in Gemini, which Mercury rules Gemini. So this is a mental a mental energy, uh, but there's so much other stuff going on, it's really powerful too. So yeah, for your mind and your ass will follow, to quote the Funkadelic. The Funkadelics. Real quick, don't forget to check out my site. This is the art page, this is that awesome astro art. I have this kind, and then I have the glyphs, and then the mandalas, those are all custom made from your chart. Uh, the readings, I have all sorts of readings. The year ahead is available till the end of December. Don't forget about that. You can scroll down. The teas, there's different ones. If you click on this one, it takes you to... This is just a bunch of different ones. Like, they're all kind of metaphysically oriented. A lot of animal totems, an alien one, different things. And that, excuse me, the other one is just those uh, mandalas. We should, this is a new moon in Gemini, right? I mean, of course I'm not going to be able to find it. Well, let's just do Sagittarius because the sun is in Sag. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, so what it is, it's these, um, these make cool gifts too. Come on, let me see. Here we go. See, it's like the a, a mandala and it's the, has a bunch of uh, words, keywords, you know. So these are pretty cool t-shirts if you're into astrology and they make good gifts too. And then the, the year ahead readings, they got all sorts of stuff. So if you want to check any of that out by, you know, Purchasing my wares and doing all that stuff, that really helps to keep these free readings free each and every... Well, I put them up pretty much weekly, you know, and I do two of these a month. Yeah, so, yeah, there's some Grand Cross. Yeah, see, energy shifted, so the old thing isn't going to be the same anymore. So you're going in with these old attitudes, it, you're, you're going to be really surprised. And be open for surprise, you know. Don't be where they have to do the tickle monster and jump on you and you're still sitting there with your front, your scowl and like, no, you won't break me, you won't make me smile, you won't make me laugh. <laughs> just be ready to laugh. Be in that Jupiter, jovial Jupiter, they just said, okay. <laughs> jovial Jupiter mode, you know, and conversation and fun and play games and have fun, you know. And uh, my brother was a Sag. 
And, you know, we used to, uh, we played everything together. We, and we were highly competitive, but it was in a good competitive way. There's a way you can be competitive. It's positive, what do they call it? Positive com com competitive? Or, but it's like, say, shooting pool, for instance. We did every, we played tennis, we played baseball, we did every kind of activity you could imagine, every kind of game. And then when video games came out, look out, we were on that. Um, healthy competition. Yeah, it's healthy competition. But let's just take pool, for instance. We used to play billiards. We grew up in the bar, you know, we were shooting pool by the time we could see over the pool table, uh, both of us. And he was a Sag, too, you know, and he never let anything bother him, you know. He's got, he was always a Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky, you know, everybody loved him. But, like, say pool. You know, we'd shoot pool, and, like, say I made a really good shot, he'd be, he'd be like, oh, damn, I gotta try that, let me, you know. And then, so, or he did it, and I'd be like, oh man, I, you know, and we would spur each other on, you know, and it wouldn't, I wouldn't get pissed because he made a, sh a better shot than me. I wouldn't sit there and get pissed and be a bad sport, you know. Don't be a poor sport. Be a good sport. That's what Jupiter is about. You know, I'd get excited, like, oh, dude, how'd you do that? I gotta try it now, you know, and then I would try to do it, you know, so we would, like, spur each other on with healthy competition and positive reinforcement. So there's a way that, you, that's a good way to use that Mars energy, because Mars is, uh, you know, physical competition and stuff like that. And he and I, you know, we did that, you know, all growing up, you know, everything, or no matter what it was, you know, and if he did it, then I had to try to do it, and if he, I did it, he had to try to do it, and we weren't pissed, we were excited, oh god, or we're like the video games, oh, you found the secret room, oh dude, how'd you do that, you know, we, we would get excited for each other, not pissed, oh, he found it, you know, I, you know, get all pissed because somebody, you know, it's, it's, life's not a competition, it's, it's like, you feed each other, you know, you go up a step, then I get there, and then I go up a step, and we stand on each other's backs to pr progress and go further, so, something to think about. So, everybody have a happy holiday, if uh, you are celebrating Thanksgiving, be ready for some surprises and some fun, try to have some fun, try to not go in with a attitude about the past, because it's just, what, what good is that really going to do you? It's a new day, have some Sagittarius fun, be lighthearted, lighthearted. It's a new moon in Gemini, great time for converse, or full moon, I should say. Great, you know, with this, and this, the other thing that just came to me, you know, the full moon in Gemini, moon, and the Pisces, secret, some secret could get, the beans could get spilled for sure. You know, that's, that's definitely coming out. Some kind of gossip or something could come out. But, you know, again, take the high road, be lighthearted, try to. All right, everybody, so thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check out my website. It should be up in the eye in the sky or links below. If you want to get the readings, the card readings are already out with the bonus cards. They're available for Patreon subscribers if you want to do donate regularly. You don't have to stay with Patreon. If you decide you don't want to do it anymore, you can quit. You know, So if you want to give it a try for a month and see if you like it, you can do so. Um, besides getting to add the all the um, card readings early, all 12, with no uh, Google ads, you also get the free bonus card for each sign. So I thought it'd be a nice little prize. It's a lot of extra work for me, so that's why I do have to charge something. But rather than charging per video, I charge one flat rate, and you can look at all 12 videos. So if you're interested in that, most people that watch this, I think I have a kind of a different crowd that watches the astrology than watches the cards. But I just thought I'd mention it real quick. So thank you so much for everything you do. Have a great holiday. Remember your love and beauty incarnate, and I'll speak to you soon.